Yo. Easy. Right. This is going to be my first in a series of tutorials for YouTube. As some of you might know, this is one of my tracks called Ocean's Eleven. Um, yeah, if you haven't heard it, then this is it. You can check it out on my SoundCloud. It's just about to drop on Smoking Sessions vinyl, so you can grab that. Basically, going to give you a little run through of what I did and how I made the tune. Um, as always, I, I normally start with drums, to be honest, because I personally think that they carry a lot of the track. A lot of my ideas directly come from the drum pan itself, so this can help me a lot. It's always good to have a solid bed of drums to start with, so um, I normally make my drum patterns by mixing um, loops and individual hits together. So let's just show how I did this. Um, so this is my first loop. It's kind of got quite a lot of character, to be honest. Um, it kind of sounds quite live. I haven't really done much EQ and I've only got a high pass filter on there. So nothing too complicated. I'm just going to keep adding the layers in. As you can see, EQing on here, I've taken quite a lot of the high end out. I find 500 hertz is usually not a very nice area on kick drums. So I normally end up taking that out. Like in, in some of my most recent tunes, my EQing is a lot more advanced than this, but we'll do advanced EQing in a different tutorial. Apologies for the quality of this mic, by the way. I'm using just an SM58. I haven't got a condenser for today. So I'm just going to keep adding the snares, the more layers that I've cut up and faded. It's all about the cross fades, by the way. Really important. As you can also see, I've got my drums going to bus. This is my group bus for, for my drums, just so I can have overall control of everything. So yeah, as I go along, keep adding the sounds in. Got the, as I said, all, all of the high end that I have in my songs, I always take take out the low, just just because it's energy that doesn't need to, to be there. Like hi-hat is supposed to be hi-hat. It's high, high in frequency. So I wouldn't really recommend having any low end in there. So you can see as all of my rides and everything that I've got in there. So I can solo that for you. So they're just, it's just the ride that's been, I've given different length fades just to almost um, just give it a bit of variation as it goes along. And you can hear that in there in the background. Now, I've watched some other people's tutorials recently and uh, a lot of people make their drums using MIDI. Now, I've got nothing against MIDI, but I personally like to see all of the transients and the waveform like it just helps me work and get a visual idea of what's going on in my song so my advice is stick to audio you know when you come to do your mix down and stuff usually you'll be bouncing to audio anyway so you might as well just start with audio in the first place now admittedly you don't have all of the same um what's the word you can't manipulate it the same as you can in a sampler. But even if you do use a sampler, I'd still recommend that as soon as you've got your sound how you want it, you just bounce it straight to audio and then put it back in your project. So yeah, the, the drums are quite basic, basic to be honest, but there's a lot of energy. And that's built up from, obviously, like I said, loops, hats, um, like all these little percussion bits that I've got. A lot of people hate the Vengeance track, but to be honest, I do use it quite a bit. Although I've been using a lot of breaks recently and stuff like from actual songs recorded off vinyl, but anyway. So this is just a little hat 
the loop that I've cut up and re rearranged so it kind of does the same as what everything else is doing. I think that's my main bit of advice is um, syncopation really, like as long as everything's going at the same time, you can kind of get a good rhythm going. Especially your snares and stuff. And like even these these parts are like high like high kicks. See these two, they're like kind of like high kicks. Or when they go with the kick, they kind of like give it its almost its kind of character and feel. So it's all about layering, but like I said, I want my, my kick drum to be my kick drum, my bass, and then I want my highs to be my highs. So I've got my high pass filter, and I've got almost like a low pass filter here. Right, moving on from the drums. Obviously, I've got a couple of crash. I've got a crash cymbal on the snare to kind of add. It's all about adding energy and drama I call it so I've got the first crash it's quite lively I've got that going to this really big reverb now my advice for reverbs and effects is I always have them on a send like this is what sends are for they're for like headphone mix if you're using a desk or effects like reverbs and stuff so think of what a reverb is it, it's, it's to emulate a room so put it this way, you wouldn't want all your sounds going through different rooms, right? So with that in mind, I normally have two reverbs. I have one which will be my room reverb, and then maybe one which is like my really long reverb to kind of add some uh, energy to whatever I put through it. But we'll get into effects in a different video. But yeah, that, that's pretty much the drum. Um... Got them little tiny clicks just to kind of add a little extra bit to it and then the tambourine on the last hit so you like you can't really you probably wouldn't even really hear this stuff unless you're really really listening out for it but it's all just about adding texture and keeping people interested in what your music is doing like put it this way if you're making it and you get bored then it's pretty boring song. <laughs> that's it. That's the easiest way to say it. You know? Be your own judge. If it sounds boring, then do something about it. Don't just just don't just sit there like listening to it. Actually, do something. Get involved. So that that's it for the drums. As for the bass and stuff, I'll get into that in another lesson. Um, yeah, well, yeah, let me know what you think of this video. If you think I went over anything too quickly or I didn't explain anything properly, then let me know. Hit me up, write it in the comments. Follow me on Twitter at N underscore Dread. Um, all the info will be in the description. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Peace.